state legislature. Um, I said it, it gave me pride in New Mexico, and it gave me pride in a state where the content of your character should matter more than the color of your skin. It gave me faith in a state where your ideas and your passion for people and your commitment to social justice it should matter more than your economic class, it should matter more than your sexual orientation, it should matter more than your religion, it should matter more than any of the things that people tell us should divide us. Because at the end of the day, we're all New Mexicans, and we, can't, we have a common hope that one day in this state, there will be the freedom to marry, there will be the freedom for every family to be protected and recognized. You know, uh, you'll hear today, um, uh, about some, some issues that we've encountered in the Senate this morning. Uh, and all I can say to you is that your work has to be stronger than hate. Our strength has to be stronger than intolerance. Because no people has ever achieved freedom through hate. No one's ever achieved liberation through responding to hatred and intolerance before hatred and intolerance. It's the strength of a common idea that every person in New Mexico should be treated equally under the law. So again, I thank you all so much for being here and for bringing your voices to this building. Regardless of all the politics that happen here and all the debates we have, this building belongs to the people of New Mexico and it belongs to you as much as it belongs to anyone else. So thank you again. God bless you. God bless you.
tell them I exist. Um, and so I think that what we need to do is we need to keep the pressure on them. And we need to let them know that we're here and that we're not going anywhere. Member Victor Ricosa. Thank you all for being here. As I sit here and I observe what happened this morning, it led me back to 20 years ago when people who came to chorus on our behalf, people who are long gone, such as uh, Neil Lisbon who fought to just make sure that we were not never discriminated against on any civil rights legislation. The battle has been long. The battle has been fought. The battle has been hard. But by you being here today, you are letting any source of hate and discrimination fully face the fact that we are here to fight till the end. That we are here to fight until we are recognized as equal citizens, not only in the state of New Mexico, but in these great United States. That's what your being here means today. I'm going to yield to the distinguished senator who is presenting our memorial today, Senator Cisco Mitzurli. smart thing, instead of blowing the Senate up, we converted our memorial to a certificate. And you guys missed it, I am so sorry. We just read the certificate welcoming you all here and proclaiming today. Thank 
Zaragoza. Give it up. So, we just heard Senator McSorley say, we made history in the state of New Mexico. Please stand up. We made history. Please send as much love as you can from your entire being, from your core, from the center of this earth, to vibrate through that Senate and let's be as loud as possible and let this roundhouse know that we are here, we're queer, and we're not going anywhere.
He has been instrumental in our community. He's been holding down support systems, support networks for many of our community when there were no programs out there. So he is a program manager for New Mexico and Empower under Planned Parenthood. Please put your hands together for Curtis Berry. Hi everyone. I know y'all look a little bit nervous out there, so just calm down, take a breath, you know, be nervous with me here. Um, so my name is Curtis, and I am the program manager of a Planned Parenthood program called NM Power. And NM Power has been in New Mexico for 15 years, and we are the longest running empowerment program project in the U.S. And in the world. So at NM Power, we provide non-traditional HIV prevention and education to gay, bi, questioning men and transgender individuals ages 18 through 29. And we do this um, by building a sense of community, nurturing self-esteem, and fostering communication. And many times individuals who identify as GBLBTQ members or a person who is living with HIV AIDS, we are often ousted from our own homes, from our own families. And for many of us, that's all we know, and that's how we identify. And this is taken away from us because of society's views on GLBTQ, the GLBTQ community and HIV AIDS. So as a gay Native American as a, and as a double minority, I'm gonna put this down. Um, I ask you all to think, today to think about the impact legislations have against people who are of the GLBTQ community and for those living with HIV AIDS, many of whom feel like second class citizens. From rights like gay marriage to hospital visits to HIV services, care, and education, we're often overlooked simply because of stigmas and phobias surrounding our communities. I'm going to read you a, a poem from a young gay Hispanic man who is living with HIV. He's been living with HIV for the past five years, and this gentleman is one of my very best friends. And it's, it's titled HIV and Me. HIV and Me will never get along. HIV and Me will always feel alone. Me and HIV will never be free unless you will be able to cure me. HIV and me are in a battle, a battle of who will ride the saddle. It's after my body like we round cattle. I made HIV in 2007, and I thought it was time for heaven. I've been positive for five years and still get tears. To find out my status, it's all our biggest fears. Now I seek acceptance to something so scary and sad, and I do not see it, so I get mad. I see others will be accepted before me in HIV, but I'm sure why this has to. Be, but I'm not sure why this has to be. I'm still alive. I've got a soul, and HIV is still doing its role. It's trying to take from me life. It's trying to make me feel my goal. My only acceptance is my own one, but it's not enough. I need more. Some I need to. Some I need everyone to educate this so HIV is always negative one. And he ends it with, thanks and always live positive. So this is a call to action. A call to action to stand to help changing inequalities in your community and the communities as a whole. This is a call to action to make changes within your friendships and kinships to inform and educate we are no less than the next person. This is a call to action to inform about HIV and GLBTQ issues and what negative impacts may come of this. I'm here today to urge each one of you to stand up for GLBTQ issues and to help educate and inform that we stand on equal ground, but we've been verbally, physically, and mentally abused for far too long. I urge you to stand up for those who are living with HIV AIDS because at the end of the day, we cry, we bleed, we sweat the same. We have emotions, we have health issues. Simply put, we are no less than, we are no greater than. We have our daily struggles as to most individuals. This is a call to action to take a stand to preserve the words said so long ago that we find these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. We are important to our families and communities as are you. We are. And this is not an attack on any of you. I'm here to simply present an opportunity to help your fellow brothers and sisters who are still here working, for, working hard for equality and acceptance. And I leave you with this quote from Chief Joseph of the Nez Harris Drive. The earth is the mother of all people, and all people should have equal rights upon it. You might as well expect the river to run backwards as that any man who was born a free man should be content when pinned up and denied liberty to go where he pleases.
have one of our uh, New Mexico reverends in the house. One of our reverends from the Albuquerque Center for Spiritual Living. Please put your hands together for Reverend Kylie Runner.
pre appreciate and share my thanks and my gratitude for, for the work that all of you are doing. Because I don't know that, that you were told thank you enough. And, and, and I know it makes a difference, not just for this generation, but all of those coming. And so anytime you feel discouraged, you know, what I love to do is, is look at the children in my community. These children who will be born into a world where the denial of rights based on your sexual orientation will be a thing of the past and completely unacceptable. And I know that my father, my father was born in a, in a world where there was such thing as segregated water fountains. And I was born into a world where that was completely unacceptable. And I know that that same truth will be what is represented in the willingness for this group of people to be standing on the side of love, standing for equality, because we will create a world where, where that is a thing in the past and that it is completely unacceptable to see it any other way. And so I thank you and I want to tell you that I stand beside you and, and I stand beside you with fellow spiritual leaders and spiritual communities and members in spiritual communities that may not have that tolerance, but they have it in their hearts. And, and let us make our voice loud enough so that we are heard. Thank you very much. Is too late for tolerance. We are asking for acceptance and we are asking that all of our families, our LGBTQ families, be respected and acknowledged in the state of New Mexico. And it is not just based on our sexual orientation, but it is also based on our gender identity and our gender expression. So with that, I'd like to bring up one of our sister organizations, the Transgender Resource Center of New Mexico, Persephone Wilson, if you will join me up here. And I neglected to introduce myself a little bit more, and I asked Persephone to stand up here with me. My name is Alma Rosal Silva Bañuelos, and I'm the director of the LGBTQ Resource Center at the University of New Mexico. UNM has acknowledged their LGBTQ student, staff, faculty, and community population. And with that, they are funding a resource center for the LGBTQ community. And we do not do this work alone because we work hand in hand with the Transgender Resource Center of New Mexico. So please give it up for one of the board members, Persephone Wilson.
Thank you, Alma Rosa, and thank you for having us here. We are elated to be here today. Good afternoon. My name is Cristina Calvillo Rivera, and this is my wife, Ambar Calvillo Rivera. they made to each other over 35 years ago, because I was about to write my own. When my parents vowed to each other was remarkably similar to the commitment I was about to promise to my life. I can recall my parents telling me that loving and being with your partner, partner should be easy. I couldn't think of anything easier than loving and being with my best friend. So on January 23rd, 2011, I got down on one knee and I proposed to her. <laughs> on August 2011, Amber and I had a beautiful commitment ceremony joined by family and close friends. I remember my aunt and uncle pulling us aside to congratulate us and said to us, your love is something to look up to. You gathered over 100 people here today to declare your love without any political gain from it. Now that's love. Ambar and I smiled at each other and told him that's the feeling we wanted everyone to leave with here today. However, the protections and benefits that come from being legally married is undeniable. So when we moved to New Mexico, we decided to get legally married in Cambridge, Massachusetts this past August. We have four copies of our marriage license one in which we carry in our car at all times because we still fear not being able to visit each other in the hospital if heaven forbid something tragic were to happen. After we came back from Massachusetts, a classmate of ours congratulated us but said, I'm sorry you had to travel so far to be recognized. We felt the same way. Christina and I will be graduating this May.
who's like Paula said the outdated notion that a family consists of a mom at home and a dad at work. While that life has never been that reality for most of us, we know that policies that affect us are based on that fantasy. And so we need politicians, all the folks here making decisions, to recognize all our families and all the totality that we bring, right? We, um, our, ra our rights are wrapped up in the rights of others. I was so honored and proud, as I am proud and honored to be here with you all today. I was so honored this weekend, this past weekend, I went up to the New Mexico Dreamers in Action retreat. I was asked to give some trainings. They are a fabulous group, of all student-led, college students, high school students coming together to fight for their immigration rights, right? And they've gotten some gains around for students, and their new frame is that they're, they're talking about their whole families. But you know what? They had no hesitation at all to include LGBTQ families in that frame. They are talking loud and clear. They are shouting at the top of their lungs, undocumented, unafraid, queer, and unashamed. I can't believe in this room before I grew up here in New Mexico and Chicana with my macho Chicano males in my family. And I couldn't believe when I saw these together and not afraid without any hesitation to include all our families and they're afraid. They're not afraid to stand up for LGBTQ rights and they're not afraid to stand up for their own. I say this because I think that this is the piece, right, where we have to come together. Our, all of our issues are wrapped up within each other and we can't con continue to dismantle this big system unless we're working together to create that movement and build that power and the people that we need. I'm also very a proud parent. I have a 17-year-old son and a 13-year-old daughter. And it makes me so happy when my daughter comes and tells me, oh, today this girl asked me out. Oh, today this boy asked me out. And she has no regrets around it. She has no hesitation. She, her friends aren't uh, talking about it. So this crap that happened today where they try to um, you know, kick us out of, of where we belong, about that so much because I know our future generations are going to hold it. But we have to keep our stand strong just as you all have today, just as our strong legislators are in being brave and taking the steps they need forward. Last, I'm going to close with um, Strong Families will be um, putting out um, some online actions around supporting House Memorial 30 and Senate Memorial 36, which is a request, it's a memorial. So it's a good way for us to shape our frame around how we talk about families and, it's, and how we include all our families. So we're immigrant, we're queer, we're single parents, grandparents parents raising grandchildren. Our families look and are shaped in all different ways. Sometimes it's not even biological. We need to choose and create the families we need. So we want to keep pushing that frame and we ask for your support. If you're interested in um, joining up for, to support House Memorial 30 or, thir or Senate Memorial 36, Please see me and I'll get, make sure your name gets on the list. Thank you, Queer and Unashamed! Thank you, give it up one more time. Adrian, I'm to go off. And I'd like you all to join me in a chant. It's only going to be three times, so don't get too worried out there. This is a chant to be in solidarity with our immigrant families and our Ondaco queers. Out and unafraid, out and unashamed. 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 Today, we made history. Let me repeat that. We made queer history. a stand, and I am honored to be standing next to each and every one of you. I'd like to honor the local planning committee that helped put this day together. We had Get Equal New Mexico, All Families Matter Coalition, we had New Mexicans for Equality, Jesse Lopez, the UNM LGBTQ Resource Center, and so many more of you.
getting the word out, and making sure that today's day was visible. Visible. So again, with your hearts full, sending love out to the Senate and the House of Representatives in the state of New Mexico, the 2013 state legislative session, the LGBTQ community is shooting out some love to all of our elected officials. Let's give it up. Thank you all so much. lobbying uh, efforts. So we ask that you all share your voice today. Go visit your elected officials and we have a few things that you can leave with them. And with that, I give you Amy Vesper with Get Equal New Mexico. Don't have 